And now for something completely different. Uh, the next video is taking a little longer than I thought it would. So I thought I'd do something different and take a look at this. This is Trial Deck 06, Naoki Ishida. And I just wanted to take a quick look at this deck, as you can see, already out of the box. Uh, I couldn't contain my excitement opening it. Uh, so you're not getting the unboxing, but that's fine, because I've had uh, a day or so to just play around with the deck and, and, and take a little look at it. And I'm just going to talk about it. Um, if any of you guys, uh, people that are up to date with the meta and are currently talking about the new Bermuda Triangle themed uh, ban list, then this video might seem a little bit bland to you, but that's fine because this video is more of a sort of surface level look at this deck and the kinds of things that you can do with this deck and if it's worth getting for a beginner. So the very first thing I'm going to do is we're going to look at the imaginary gifts. This one's Excel. This is the very first trial deck to ever have the Excel imaginary gift and that excites me a lot because this is my second favorite. Uh, recently actually, recently my, my favorite became Protect uh, for reasons I, I guess I'll get into in a later video. But Force doesn't quite do it for me other than how Neo Nectar uses it. Neo Nectar uses Force quite nicely, but other decks kind of just have a sort of boring, like, your main vanguard is more powerful now sort of effect. And I feel like there's, I feel like I like the other two more because there's more versatility you can get out of them. And Excel is definitely the one that stands out most at first in terms of the sorts of things that you can be doing with it. So now we're going to move on to the deck itself. Uh, unsleeved because I didn't have any offhand sleeves. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but yes, so this is your starting vanguard. Um, fairly basic. You can tell he's the starting vanguard because there's only one copy of him in the entire deck. And he's a level zero that does not have that yellow bar on the bottom. If you can see later on in the deck, most level zeros have a yellow bar on the back and that's because they have uh, triggers. But this level zero does not have a trigger and that's because while well, he's just starting vanguard, he doesn't need to be a trigger. You're never gonna actually um, you know, drive check him, basically. So he is your main starting vanguard. He's pretty cool. Uh, he has a very generic starting vanguard effect uh, that basically just is when you ride on him, you draw a card. Uh, I like the mental image of uh, riding on this kid who's also riding on a little dragon. Uh, since this game is, is so heavily focused on, uh, this game is so heavily focused on the imagination element of the game. Uh, so yes. Now, as you can see from the back of this deck, one of the most, one of the best cards from this deck immediately is actually your grade two units, Recklessness Dragon. This guy is fantastic. Uh, so if you can see, when placed, you can counter blast one, choose a rare guard in your opponent's front row, and bind it. And if it's on the rare guard, when it attacks the vanguard, if your opponent's front row has one or less rare guards, this unit gets plus 3,000 attack until the end of battle. Now that's very good. And the main, basically the main mission statement for this deck is you want to be binding and getting rid of your opponent's rare guard. So mainly the units that would be here or here, but also the ones here, but mainly the ones here and here. Uh, and that's where Excel comes into play because basically by using Excel and placing it around about here, you're giving yourself an extra front rear guard, which is interesting because that means that Anara, like hypothetically, a Narakami deck should probably do pretty well against another Narakami deck since you've got extra rare guards to play with. So I do find that interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the if, if that's the imaginary gift I would have gave Narakami. Personally, I think I may have went for a Protect instead, but then again, I feel like I would have given Protect to almost any uh, clan because I feel like that's a very underutilized gift that has a lot of unused potential. Ooh, shiny. So yes, here's, here's your main grade three, and honestly, my, my first criticism for this deck is that the main, fr uh, the, the main grade threes aren't that great. As you saw earlier, uh, I, I was talking about the grade two unit, and I think he's actually a little bit more important to this deck than your grade three. So here's Great Composure Dragon. Um, 
when he's placed on the Vanguard Circle or the Rare Guard at the beginning of your or your opponent's battle phase, this unit gets plus 3,000 to the end of the turn for each open Rare Guard into your opponent's front row. If it is your turn, it gets 5,000 instead of 3,000. So basically, as you can see once again, the less front Rare Guards your opponent has, the better you're going to be doing. And of course, because he's a great free, he gives you that little XL unit which is very useful. So basically what you're doing is you're taking your grade 1s and 2s and using them to set up by getting rid of the front rear guards and then placing the grade 3s to kind of capitalize and brute force past your now potentially defenseless opponent. Um, and then this guy, if I'm correct, isn't very good at all. Uh, yeah, or a rare guard when placed, choose up to one of your opponent's rare guards. Move it to an open rare guard circle, the same column as that unit, and this unit gets plus 5,000 damage. So basically, once again, you're getting more damage depending on how many or how little uh, rare guards that your opponent gets. So those are your main grade 3s, and here are the grade 2s. So, as I mentioned, this guy here, Reckless the Dragon, he is your good grade 2. We already kind of went through him. Uh, so this is Excess Street Dragon when placed uh, Counter Blast and Soul Blast 1, so a fairly expensive uh, effect. Choose a rare guard in your opponent's front row and bind it. If you bound a card, this unit gets plus 10,000 till the end of the turn. So this is the bread and butter of the deck. This is definitely the kind of strategy you want to rely on. You are just wanting to get in there, you are wanting to use admittedly expensive effects, but ones that will just completely get rid of your opponent's rare guard. Now I find it very funny that in the anime, Naoki's rival is Ibuki. First of all, because Ibuki's main rival is actually Chrono, and there's been a lot of jokes how Chrono and Naoki are the same characters each other, basically. But more card game-wise, I think it's funny these two are, uh, are portrayed as rivals, because they actually have very similar decks, in that they both very heavily revolve around shutting down your opponent's units. So now you have this guy, uh, Thunderstorm Dragoon. Uh, it gets very confusing with this deck because some cards are dragons and other ones are dragoons. So that's annoying. So during your turn, when this is on the, uh, the rare Vanguard circle, your opponent's front row has one or less rare guards. This unit gets 5,000. So once again, the more, the, the less rare guards your opponent has, the better. You can kind of see where this is going, right? You, you, you very much just want to get rid of your opponent's rare guard. And if you can do that successfully, you are fairly golden. So the, the grade ones are, are a bit hit and miss, in my opinion. This guy's pretty great because he is a perfect guard, and he has the generic perfect guard effect, where you just had to discard a card to your hand to perfect guard. So he's pretty great. You know, it, 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 it never really hurts to have a perfect guard in your thing. Now this starter deck, this trial deck even, only gives you three copies of this one. Uh, which is interesting because most of the other cards it gives you uh, four copies of. So this guy, you can counter blast two when he's on your rare guard, and he gets 5,000 till the end of the turn. If your opponent's front row has one or less rare guards, it gets 10,000 instead of 5,000. Once again, you can kind of see where he's going. This guy's very powerful for a grade one, because he's basically just as powerful as most of the grade twos, except he's a grade one. So you can kind of get him out on the field faster. So he is a very, very nice one to have. If you're, if you're going to actually build upon this trial deck, I would, first thing I'd recommend doing is getting a fourth copy of him because he seems like he would be very, very useful. Um, so there's this guy, Lizard Soldier Ricky. When he's on the Vanguard or the Rare Guard circle, you can Soul Blast one and this unit gets 3,000 until the end of the turn. You may switch out your opponent's Rare Guards between the front and back rows. So this is an interesting one because he's basically just fucking with the opponent because you can very much just move around your opponent's um, rare guards, which if anything could potentially be more effective than just outright getting rid of them or binding them. Because by being able to move them around, well, usually on the back, you'd have grade zero one units, and then at the front, you'd have uh, grade two and upwards, maybe one and upwards. And, and, and so by, by being able to shift them around and, and moving the, the grade zero and ones forward, you're actually, you know, you're opening up options there, which, which is nice. Uh, I, I quite like that. And this guy, yeah, if, if, I was, if, if I was to build upon this Narakami deck, once again, one of the first things I'd do is just get rid of this guy. Because admittedly, you know, his attack power 
is pretty high for a grade one, but he doesn't do anything. He, he's just kind of there. Uh, I mean, you know, he's got the boost, but I feel like, you know, every grade one has boost, so what's the point? Y yeah, this guy is very disposable. This is, this is the trial deck filler. This is the kind of garbage they put in there to keep the cost of the trial decks down. Uh, so yeah, I'd, I'd get rid of him. I'm sorry, I don't like you. So here are your triggers. Here are your, your grade zero triggers. So you get four critical triggers. And I mean, yeah, when you're running a deck, you kind of want at least four critical triggers. So that kind of goes without saying. Now this guy, or this gal, I guess, is your front trigger. Now front trigger, this, if anything in this deck, I'd say your front trigger is kind of more important than than your uh, critical triggers. Because like I said, this is very much a deck based around controlling both your own and your opponent's rare guard units. And of course, the front trigger stands everything in the front row. And so being able to stand your own front row at the end of one of your turns is very, very useful. That's something that cannot be underestimated. So now you get some draw triggers, just to kind of give this deck a little bit more uh, draw power. Which is nice, you know. I appreciate having draw power. Back when I used to, back when I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh, I'd very much waste my hands immediately. I'd have a problem with that. And so, any deck giving me extra draw power is is always good. And of course, you've got your heal triggers. You get four of them. You only allowed four of them. And yeah, pretty decent heal trigger. You know, the having the ability to heal your own damage is always very, very appreciated. So that's my look at, again, it's a very surface level look at the Naoki Ishida Narakami deck. Uh, I definitely recommend picking it up if you're if you're interested in it. I, I like the idea that even though this is a trial deck, and, and so this is just something that you play with straight out of the box, it's already giving you options in, in terms of controlling the opponent's field. Instead of being a more straightforward deck where you just kind of build up your own units and attack, you're, you're kind of playing around and, and playing some mind games with the opponent by shutting down a lot of their uh, attacks, which is a very like fun thing to be able to play around with right out of the box. You're already kind of committing to some very interesting strategies. So if you're wanting to build um, more Narakamis, uh, this is obviously a good place to start because you get again a lot of ha uh, like a handful of really solid cards for a fairly cheap and affordable price point. And if you're wanting to build more Narakamis, then there is the Miyagi Academy Car Fight Club booster, which gives you 18 new uh, Narakami cards, and there is the Aerial Steed Liberation set, which gives you 22 new Narakami. So already we're actually not getting a bad amount of support for this thing. We've already got two sets focused on it, which is a lot more than I can say for a lot of other sets, which have kind of been hurting for support recently. So yep, that's my look at the Narakami set, uh, the Narakami trial deck. If you're, look, if you're wondering what deck I'm personally wanting to build, I'm, I'm personally wanting to build a Neo Nectar deck. That's the one that's interesting me. Uh, of course, it's got Wrecker, but also I, I've always been interested in the Neo Nectars, the idea that it can play around with tokens and, and the idea that it's using the Force Marker to kind of buff some uh, less powerful units and, and kind of uh, bombard the opponent like that. It, it's very interesting to me. It's something that really does um, interest me a lot. Um, but in terms of other decks that I'm interested in building, I've heard good things about Grand Blue and, and Great Nature. Uh, I, I'm kind of interested here and there in, in Aquaforce. Uh, so that's another one that, that's kind of got my attention. So, yep, that's my look at the Naoki Ishida trial deck. And if you liked videos like these, ones where I look at more of the card game than I do the actual anime, because uh, if you're new here, this is more of a Vanguard anime channel than it is a card game channel. But if you're interested in this, then I shall take a look at the Koji Ibuki trial deck after this. So, yep, that's my thoughts on the Naoki Ishida deck. Definitely a deck worth picking up, especially if you're a beginner. Because, again, it, it definitely gives you a lot of options right out of the box. And, and it definitely gives you a lot of control over the opponent's rare guards. And I really do appreciate that. Again, there's still a handful of dud cards here and there. But... I mean, it's a trial deck. You're always going to get kind of fillery crap cards here and there just to kind of keep the cost of the trial deck down and just to keep it beginner friendly so you're not completely swarmed and overwhelmed with different strategies and uh, novels worth of text. So yeah, that's my look at the Narakami deck. 
I really like it. It's a really fun deck to play around with. Uh, and I will see you later.